I think there were two reasons. Uh, the first reason is the one that you've outlined uh, being uh, um, our view of the political settings in the United States um, have uh, been altered. Um, we've uh, taken them down um, a notch, uh, taken the rating down a notch. Um, the political brinkmanship we saw over raising the debt ceiling was something that was really beyond our expectations. The U.S. government getting to uh, the last day before they had cash management problems. There are very few governments that separate the budget process uh, from uh, the debt authorization process. Um, and um, we also think more broadly that this debate has uh, shown that although we do have a, an agreement that will, and we do believe will deliver, at least uh, $2.1 trillion of savings over the next decade. It's going to be difficult to get beyond that, at least in the near term, and you do need to get beyond that to get to a point where the debt-to-GDP ratio is going to stabilize. So it's interesting. You're saying, without a doubt, the recent debate, the recent uh, uh, roadblocks in Congress, the tenor, the timing, the tone of the debate, had a major impact on this. Yes. I think that is what uh, put things over the brink. In addition, we have a, a medium-term uh, fiscal forecast that uh, we see, um, um, you know, the debt-to-GDP uh, ratio to continuing to rise over the forecast horizon and putting it in a position where it would no longer be uh, compatible with many other AAA ratings. Already on Twitter, other places, Republicans and Democrats are pointing the fingers at each other, at President Obama, at Congress. Do you blame one side more than the other? No, I think that there's uh, plenty of blame to go around. This is a problem that's been a long time in the making, well over this administration, the prior administration. Um, the, um, um, it's a matter of um, the medium and long term budget um, position of the United States that needs to be brought uh, under control, not the immediate uh, fiscal position. It's one that centers on entitlements and its entitlement reform or uh, having matching revenues to pay for those entitlements. That's at the crux of the matter. What, kind, what could the United States have done to avo have avoided this? Well, I think it could have done a few things. I mean, the first thing it could have done is to have raised the debt ceiling in a timely manner so that much of this uh, debate had been avoided to begin with, as it had done, um, you know, 60 or 70 times um, since uh, 1960 without uh, that much debate. So that's uh, point number one. And point number two is it could have come up with a fiscal plan you know, similar, for example, to, uh, you know, the Bowles simpson Commission, which uh, was bipartisan, um, although it didn't have a supermajority vote, it did have a majority vote, and came up with a number of sensible um, uh, recommendations. I mean, you could envision other recommendations, but that would have been a start.